Hey, Roa here. So this video is going to be how you can make your own uh, batteries for any brand. In my case, I use DeWalt, um, you know, for your DeWalt power tools. So this is my 6 amp hour DeWalt battery pack. Um, this, I got the whole case and everything on Ali, uh, AliExpress for, I think it was like 15, 18 bucks. Um, these cells I get from a bunch of scrap laptop batteries i was able to get these for like two dollars each um you pretty much disassemble them get the cells you're able to buy these cells elsewhere um also without having to disassemble them i just managed to find a good deal um online there's all there's this website called batteryhookup.com uh they occasionally have these cells are able to buy for very cheap um but yeah pretty much the if you're able to get these cells you're able to make these packs very easily and i'll show you the process um since again since mine is used i have to test and uh check the currents of my batteries um or cells so what you see right here is pretty much a, a charging station and a discharging uh, capacity test station so what this does is it fully tests once it's you know fully charged uh, sorry this station right here fully charges it. Once it's fully charged, you know, it shows me it's green. And it gets to 4.2 volts. Then I grab this from here and put it here. Um, this right here discharges it. So these are resistors. They actually are pretty hot. Um, and it discharges it all the way to its lowest voltage and measures how much capacity this has. Once it's done, it tells me um, its capacity. And then I write it down. So as here, I already have it written down on these. I write them down, I get the best ones, I keep the best ones for my uh, battery packs, my power tool battery packs, and the rest I use it for my projects and whatever. So here's the uh, first step in assembling this, so pretty much you get a uh, actual PCB board which connects to here. Um, this actually connects to the to your power tool. Um, you first have to solder this little wire uh, to the back of this, and each one it has a pinout to um to which one so i i made a mistake once where i simply connected it minus and then first cell second cell third cell but no they're actually goes from like b and then at 16 volts 8 volts 4 volts slow volts so um you have to you know make sure you have it in the the right sequence um and then you have this thing which tells you the capacity so when you click on the front of the battery pack um it tells you if it's charged or not Alrighty, once you got this soldered up, uh, next thing is just to drop them in. Uh, different battery packs uh, have different instructions. Again, this is the DeWalt one. You know, when you buy these uh, assembly kits from AliExpress, they don't really give you any instructions. Um, uh, with the DeWalt one, it doesn't matter since the PCB board, it's all coming off with wires. Again, like for example, if you were to get the Ryobi kit ones, um, they actually have the PCB board all the way across. And the, this, you simply have the metal strips on here and it goes straight onto the PCB board. Um, so, yeah, um, I also need to clean off the statements, everything, so it gets, just slides in easier. But pretty much the most important thing to know about this is to keep the amp hour capacity for each cell the same. Um, so right now I'm just picking out all, all my 2.0 ones, approximately 2.0 ones, um, and having them all in the same cell. Um, but technically, it doesn't matter, right? You can have, like, for example, this a 3.1, this a 1.1, and this a 1.1, right? And then you could have this, um, I don't know, a 2.0 and a 2.0 and have nothing. Pro most important thing, uh, or no, a 2.0, 2.0, and a 1.0. Most important thing is just to have the same amount of capacity on each cell uh, when you do it. Because otherwise, when you charge or discharge it, what happens is that the lowest capacity of one, it drastically increases and decreases in voltage uh, compared to the other ones, and it quickly degrades and damages that cell pack. So, very important. Uh, that's also why uh, cell balancing is very important. But these ones don't really have cell balancing. They're mostly a joke. So, um, yeah. Another that's super useful in this is a hot glue gun. Um, I've had once a battery pack um, almost catch on fire because one of the wires, they, like, while I was putting it together, it went off to the side and it, it pinched um, when I was putting a case together. So, and it, it just helps so much when you're assembling, putting it all together. So, like this, for example, I need to uh, put this pack on this one. Um, and as you see, so pretty much it has these guide holes and these pins. 
um, that you just put in there. But, you know, again, when you're assembling, when you're wiring it together, it keeps falling out. So I just put in two wobs of hot glue. And then that's it. Now I'll hold it in, uh, in place. Another great thing about all this is when you understand how these battery packs work, you understand how this all works, you're able to fix old battery packs. Um, so, for example, here is a battery pack that actually someone threw away on a construction site. <laughs> and um, I think the issue this one I had, like the connections on this were corroded. And all I did was replace the, the connector. Um, and it worked. It worked fabulously. Um, so, you know, if you do have an old battery pack, you know, you could uh, take apart all the cells, uh, you know, do this uh, charging, discharging test thing to make sure that the capacity is good. The bad ones you throw away, the good, uh, you know, the, and you replace it with some good ones. So pretty simple, very easy and cheap. Alrighty, once you got them all uh, put in, uh, next thing is start to uh, put this on top and weld them together. So pretty much you have one like this, one like this, and one strip like this. On the other side, you do it the other way, so you'd have one right here, one right here, and then the single strip, the single strip on this back end. Um, and then you'd have your plus here and your minus on here. Uh, most important thing though is don't hot glue these cells uh, in case in the future if you want to uh, replace them or whatever um, you know you could easily simply uh, peel this out and slide these cells out um, you know if there's any issues in the future um, shouldn't really be any issues but I mean it's, it's good to future proof them with these cells um, uh, I use a this thing to weld them. I use I tried making my own uh, spot welder with a microwave transformer oven and Oh, oh, it worked, but it was it was it was just way, way too sporadic. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it wouldn't work. Um, and this one, I it also has issues. It's not as good, but you know it's better than nothing. And this one is an automatic one. So how it works is first you pretty much put the two welders, and then once it senses that there's a contact, it waits a second and it spot welds, and it waits for you to, to, to take it off, reapply it, and then it'll you know repeat the cycle. So pretty cool. So here's uh, the first side, now to do the other side. Got it all assembled, all that's left is to simply uh, connect these wires to these uh, little tabs. Um, so with this one, so all these wires, they go to each individual one, and then these, with this and this one, with this side is the minus, this minus goes to this, this is B minus, and then this one goes to this B plus. Um, I just use a, a, a thick wire, um, and I just run it through, and again, I'll be using a hot glue gun to keep the wire in place so that when I assemble it all, it stays put. And it also has these little tracks thing that you're able to, like, nicely, you know, weave your wire into, but again, they just, they just fall out, they're pretty trash. Um, so I'll be putting a wire in there and then hot gluing it in place. Another thing to do is to uh, wire this up. So this, it has these two pins on the bottom. Um, so the one on the right is positive, the one on the left is negative. Um, this would be going on the, the back or front or battery. I don't know which direction is the front or back. So for this one, you also need a, a wire, a, a solder two wires to this and this. Um, doesn't matter the thickness of this because it's, it's not going to be drawing a lot of current, um, but yeah. Once you got it all soldered together, hot glued, I didn't hot glue one, this one because typically uh, I like to keep it free, and managing two cables isn't too big a deal, so you just put it in there, um, slide this in there, slide this, oops, that's the wrong way, in there, uh, get the spring, put it like that, and then the top, and at the top, you just put it like this. Not kind of hard to do with one hand, but yeah. That's it. Uh, and then you just put those four screws in from the bottom, and yeah, we'll see if it works. Alright, got it assembled, and, and it's charging. Great. Uh, so it works. Um, so I'm going to get it fully charged, and I mean, it's at this point, it pretty much works, I know for sure. So let's put this, again, this is the same one with the low battery, into the chainsaw. And test it out. Works fabulously. 
If you liked the video, please subscribe. I'd pull, I'll make a lot more similar videos on this on how you could you know, save money and uh, do a lot better stuff around your home set. So this is how you build a uh, very cheap, you know, six amp hour uh, Dewalt battery for, you know, all, it was like maybe 20 bucks uh, in parts because I paid uh, 15, 18 bucks for this uh, the, from AliExpress and I got the, the AT650 cells for like two, four bucks. Um, uh, you know, I have, I have so many of them. <laughs> I don't know what to do with them. And again, you you can buy uh, used laptop batteries uh, on eBay. Uh, they sell them um, uh, pretty much like entire like boxes full of them. You know, they could just buy in the hundreds full. You know, for fifty whatever bucks. You know, it's it's just it's so cheap to get them. Um, but yeah, just look around and you know try to try to think hard. You know, instead of wasting money on you know because something like this it typically costs sixty eighty bucks for to buy it from you know Dewalt. And uh, now I have something that, you know, I know is very good quality because um, the 18650 cells was very interesting about uh, lithium batteries is that the used ones are actually better and longer lasting than um, new ones. So whatever reason, some cells, uh, when they're when they're used enough, um, they, they kind of hold their charge better uh, whatever reason. So, yeah, um, just, you know, and one, one thing I like about these bigger packs and with lithium batteries, uh, what kills them the most is the last uh, 20 percent, uh, 10 to 20 percent and the first 10 to 20 percent of charging and discharging. So, uh, you know, with these bigger size battery packs, you know, since you're not going to be, <laughs> it's, it's pretty rarely that you're going to be depleting this, uh, especially with like an impact and drill. You know, with the chainsaw, yeah, I'll, I'll go through this. Um, um, but, you know, if when you have literally dozens of these, right, that you made yourself, you know, you can swap them out, you know, more frequently instead of char just charging it all the way and discharging it all the way and degrading them uh, far quicker. So yeah, again, if you like, please subscribe. I'll I'll post a uh, video pretty soon about the golf cart that I'm rebuilding. This one, I also did the batteries for it. Um, and also, uh, pretty soon I'll try a video on how to make your own uh, batteries from scrap, literally scrap metal. You'll be I I I think a lot of people will be interested in that one. It's called the uh, Iron Redox Flow batteries. So yeah, uh, please subs please get subscribed because it'll get really fun really soon on this channel.